In my opinion, doomed from the start, it has so much organization weaknesses and it could chances for success because the main idea of the League of Nations was to maintain peace and it was handling this job really well. There were so many disputes in 1920s and 1930s and after the First World War and it could deal with most of them, especially border disputes. It had with a lot of them. If not, the League of Nations the war would have much earlier than it really did. It had support of all the people at the time. They didn't want war to happen again. But yeah, World War II happened, that's a fact. But it could have happened much earlier if not League of Nations. And depression was the only reason why everything failed. And what would you say about that it was so dependent on the main powers like Britain and France? Just simply take Vilna in the 1920s, uh, Poland just took over the capital of Lubyanya and Britain and France didn't want to send their troops because France was looking forward for the alliance with Poland and blah 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 and so what? The League of Nations did nothing. But it was successful with dealing with all the other countries. All the countries were need to avoid to avoid the war and Britain and France they were just they maybe couldn't realize it. For example, look at Island Islands in 1921. It was the dispute between Sweden and Finland. It was swiftly solved by the League of Nations. Just another war was a, another war was awaited in Bulgaria in 1925, with the Greece invaded Bulgaria. League of Nations condemned Greece and made it pay reparations. That's what it did. Come on, it was all so small countries. Okay, you are baby, you do what I want, you do what I tell to tell you. Deal with them because they were afraid of the major powers that we had. But just take over for 1923. Well, okay, it had succeeded there, uh, but well, come on, Mussolini just had simply changed the decision of the league. He just so simply show, didn't show the respect of the league. Then, well, take Manchuria in 1931, uh, the league. What was its excuse? It was so far? Okay, it took one year, a, a year, to solve this problem, come on! I mean, the Manchuria was taken out and the people were dying and starving. Okay, uh, in 1935, it was in the middle of the year, in the center, right in the center, and the league still did nothing. Now they had no excuse. However, in 1921, remember Upper Silesia? It was another crisis with Soviet and it, included, and it included Germany in it. Maybe you don't consider Germany as a big country, but it was a border dispute between Germany and Poland because Upper Silesia was a very good industrial area and it was inhabited by both German and Poland. More clubs that they were organized by the League of Nations to see what actually all people wanted to be. Industrial area voted for Germany and rural area for Poland, so they divided it. And also they provided all both sides with water. They sent Britain and French troops to keep the order in there. And they 
not about the will of the people who were there. So I think that the League of Nations thought about everything. How did they do their decisions? Unanimous decisions. How can you imagine this? Take Manchuria. They didn't work. Take Manchuria. 42 against 1. Just one vote and it fails. They could do nothing. It, it doesn't work. Unanimous decisions are slow and not effective. It took ages to do these decisions. Yes, but the, the main thing was to please everyone, to, to satisfy everyone. And if they have this decision, they satisfy all the world. Yes, maybe in maturity it was a bit of not very good thing, but they did satisfy everyone. <clears throat> all the countries were conscious of the decision that they made, and it was the only way to do this. And how they did the voting, they gave people what they wanted, and that's how the peace works. Contained of the greatest powers in Europe, we contained of 48 nations, a huge alliance of 48 nations that was solving worldwide problems. They knew what the world wanted, they knew what people wanted. 48 nations working towards peace, disarmament, better working and living conditions for people. Do you really think that someone could go against them? They could do everything. They had the great power at the time. Come on, just, just say me. Uh, who set up the League of Nations? Oh, American president. And uh, why did America didn't even was a member? Don't wanna be an American idiot. Don't want a nation under the new media. Hey, can you really Come on. Russia wasn't a member. Japan left it. Just gonna stand there. Alright, because I like the way it German wasn't a member. How can he enforce the economic sanctions and collective security? I'm not talking about collective security, just economic sanctions. Just imagine economic sanctions without America. It's just funny. However, it was effective in 1920s, don't you think so? And it had much more successes than it had failures. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Economy was crippled, and of course, European economy was crippled too. America gave loans to all the countries in Europe, and they couldn't pay them back. Oh yeah, and then what happened after? People lost their jobs. People lost everything. Nobody was ready for this, and of course, League of Nations couldn't help the world that was getting mad because all the countries would recover the economy by expanding their territories.
with more than 14 nations in the League of Nations. Can you imagine such a huge alliance? <laughs> Okay, let's do this. I forgot my words. <laughs> Five more. Go. Okay. <laughs> Fine. What did you just say? I don't know. I don't know. It's confusing. It was in 1920s. It was. It was. What was it? Successful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Okay.